Hello again. We are Chris Lee and Chase Robinson of Southeastern 14 here to discuss the three biggest questions for Georgia football. As we do this, we're about a week out from Georgia's spring game, so keep that in mind. Before we begin, a reminder, our channel presented by Bet Online. The Final Four is in the books. Bet Online has been your tournament headquarters all March long. Now that we're almost down to the finals, we've got a lot more in store. Major League Baseball is here, and the NBA and NHL playoffs are around the corner. As always, Bet Online is the number one source for your summer sports wagering. Head to Bet Online today. Stay updated on all the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE. That is B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online. The game starts here. Well, Chase, Georgia missed the playoff last year, but expected to be in national title contention for next season, but some questions to answer. And Georgia's always got the talent, but the question is, how does it shake out? Let's start with the wide receiver room, where Georgia's got an interesting collection of guys. Uh, of course, it lost Lad McConkey, who could be a first-rounder. It lost Brock Bowers, who was a, a tight end, but also a big part of that Georgia receiving core. But you've got some familiar names, Dominic Lovett, Rara Thomas, London Humphreys transferred from Vanderbilt. How does that all shake out? I feel like Georgia's got the talent there, uh, but where the distribution of, of targets goes, we'll, we'll wait and see. Right, yeah, and it's uh, it's uh, it's still got talent, even though you mentioned the guys who have declared who will be going to the NFL. You lost five others to the portal. Uh, but there's still guys you mentioned, Ron Ron Thomas, Dominique Lovett, uh, Anthony Evans, Arian Smith, Dylan Bell, all guys who are still there who – may not have performed like they thought they would when they recruited them to Georgia, uh, but guys who have the potential to to make some plays, to make some catches. Some of these guys may have had strong starts in their career uh, or not strong starts, but have, have come on a little bit because of injuries last season. They had a chance to, to step in there. I think of Dominic Lovett, who came in when uh, Brock Bowers got hurt. You know, uh, Rob Ra Thomas coming from Mississippi State to – to Georgia he's had some catches so uh, I, I think this is a good group that they have but they they said hey we got to go we got to add some guys to this room to to make this a really special offense so they went out and got Michael Jackson the third from USC they got uh, London Humphreys from Vanderbilt they got Colby Young from Miami and they brought them to Georgia to really strengthen this room and you know Georgia has they lost 17 players overall to the portal last year, so it's constantly a kind of a reload mindset at Georgia. And I thought they did a really good job of bringing these three guys in uh, to this wide receiver room to an offense that I th think is going to be spectacular uh, this year and put up a lot of points um, just from what we're hearing from spring practice. And I know we'll see uh, much more in their their spring game when they uh, when they get on the field and we can watch it. Uh, but I, I like what they've done to this wide receiver room. There's a lot of depth, and I think that's really important. And uh, I think we'll see a lot of these guys kind of come in and out. You know, I, I think we feel like we've seen just the same receivers over and over for Georgia. I don't think that's going to be the case anymore just because the guys he's added on top of who he has uh, is, is causing a lot of depth. And I think that's really going to help this offense having a number of guys who can make plays and make catches. Yeah, Georgia's always got so much talent. You had guys like Thomas and Lovett who took a big step down in target share from their previous offenses at Mississippi State and Missouri. But but that's just Georgia football. There's talent everywhere. You, you kind of wait your turn, share your reps with other guys. And the same thing is true in the secondary where Georgia's had incredible talent. There's some names we know back, Dan Jackson, Malachi Starks, but a lot of new names too. And again, at Georgia, just collecting talent and then giving guys a chance. And we're going to see some guys who have been waiting their turn uh, get a chance to shine this year. Yeah, a lot of second-year guys will be on the field. Uh, you know, some who have who have, have really a lot of experience with Georgia, some who don't, uh, but they're going to get it this year. Uh, and I think this defense is going to be strong this year, again, and especially in the secondary. And uh, just from what we've heard Kirby Smart say is is the offense is way ahead of the defense at this point of spring. But you got to keep in mind, Kirby Smart and defense, that's his, that's his side of the ball. And so I think he puts uh, much greater expectations 
-hmm. the defense than he does the offense. So you can kind of take what he says about the defense with a grain of salt because they could have a really good defense but still not live up to his expectations that he has on them. He is a, a great defensive mind. Uh, but uh, I think from what I've been reading, a name to remember is C.J. Allen, a uh, linebacker. He may be one of those hybrid guys, but uh, he's been having a really good spring stepping in. He's second-year guy, and uh, I think he's getting a lot of experience this spring that's going to help him. Uh, also, Rylan Wilson uh, in that same position is getting a lot of experience. But they've got some up, up and covers like Jordan Hall and uh, Joseph Jonah Ojaye, uh, who's come in and, and have have played really good this spring. Those are going to be names that you'll be hearing in the fall, as well as uh, Nazir uh, Stackhouse on the defensive line, apparently uh, has been having a, a good spring as well. So the secondary is going to be strong, I think, again, because of a lot of experience that they have and a lot of these second-year guys who are, uh, are stepping up. Again, when you're at Georgia, when you have a lot of players who are going to be drafted, 17 gone from last year, like I mentioned a moment ago, you, you've got to have guys who step up, and uh, I think they have a lot of these guys who are going to step up in the secondary this year. And you got to think they're playing the best of the best in practice. I mean, last year, even though Georgia didn't make the playoff to me, they were, if not the best, one of the best college football teams in the country. And these these guys, these younger guys were going against them every day in practice, and so they're getting better. Uh, Kirby, again, Kirby Smart is a great defensive mind. And he's, uh, I know, working a lot with these linebackers and these guys. So I think the uh, the secondary is going to look good this year. And uh, again, they're playing really good offenses in the SEC. And I think they're going to be able to stop them. I really do. Uh, that's anytime Kirby Smart is is is, uh, is on the field and, and has some players at defense, he's going to develop them in the way that they should go. So I'm looking for the secondary for Georgia to be really good this year. All right, we talked about receivers earlier. The other component of that is a quarterback spot where Carson Beck came in, had a really tremendous first year. Some think he's the best quarterback in the league, but he's used to throwing to the same guys, McConkey, Bowers. And when we talked about some second-year receivers that transferred in, but when you've got a guy like Brock Bowers, who's a, a tight end for the ages across college football, He's kind of there as your security blanket. <laughs> that, 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 that given that most quarterbacks don't have a guy like McConkey who could take the top off a of defense too with the deep speed. Uh, it's just going to be interesting. I mean, this is this is a a first world football problem here, Chase. When you've got yep. the receivers they've got, but but it's different with different guys and different things that they can do. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that chemistry develops with with Carson Beck and and a different cast of guys this year. Yeah, and because he had been in the quarterback room, he was under Stetson Bennett, and so he did get some reps with with guys like Lad McConkey and Brock Bowers. So he kind of knew them when he got the starting role. That was probably easy for him to step in, guys he'd been throwing to in practice and, and guys that he knew. Uh, but now, again, that he's stepping in uh, to his second year in the role, he's got some expectations on him. Uh, and I do think he is a tremendous quarterback. I, I love watching him play. I think he's great. And I think he's going to be one of the great ones uh, in, in in Georgia football. But he's got to get on the same page as these receivers. And I know that's what they, they're they working on this spring and will be in the offseason because there's a, there's a chemistry that, that has to be in place between a quarterback and his receivers, especially when you have new guys coming in. And this is just how college football is now. You're going to have, you know, at least you know three or four new guys probably every year in 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 a in a position, and so uh, I think Carson Beck has what it takes to be one of the, the great ones in, in Georgia football. But uh, it, it's going to start just with the simple fact that you have to have really good chemistry with these receivers, and I, and I know that's what he's working on because he wants to be successful, and so that's one of the the uh things to be successful is 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 good chemistry and i think they're working towards that but uh you know i i think that carson beck has has been used to having guys that he can just put the ball up i think of brock bowers put the ball in his direction and he's going to make a play and i think they still have some guys who can do that and that's going to help carson beck out a lot is is having guys where he can put it up and they're going to make a play and, and bring it down and and uh, some of these new guys they've brought in and even some of these guys that they they've kept I think of Dylan Bell who uh, had a really strong finish to last year and and he's looking to to keep that up 
Uh, so I, I think once they get on the same page, once there's really good chemistry between Carson Beck and the receivers, I think this offense is going to be lethal. Uh, I mean, they're going to be dangerous. And, um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of high expectations on Georgia, rightfully so. And I think they can live up to those for sure this year because they have a guy like a, a veteran guy like Carson Beck uh, and, and a really good group of receivers. And and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching this offense play in the fall. Yeah, so am I. Kirby Smart has done an incredible job. Georgia's had a top five offense and a top five defense in the country for probably, I don't know, four or five years running now at least. And uh, the the names change. Uh, the, the win and loss totals don't change a whole lot. And so I, I think we're going to see more of that from Georgia this year, just be a matter of who takes the, the roles and, and runs with them where. We'll be here to cover it, whatever way that shakes out. Best way to see it, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. That helps our analytics. For Chase Robinson, I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14, presented by Bet Online.